All right, people. This is it. We're here. Chris, we finally got our other two guys. Uh, welcome, people, everyone. This is the first official Morgan J. Freeman Awards. Chris and I, we announced the nominees a couple weeks ago, officially, live. And now we got our other two guys, Mike and Nick, here in order to help us announce these goddamn winners. We're here the night before the Oscars. And yeah. in my humble opinion, we are going to do a fucking better job at the Oscars because we got better nominees. Yeah. We got better just overall. We're going to hopefully have better winners. And in my opinion, we got a much better voting panel than any of the fucking people, because unlike the rest of the Oscar voters who just vote for the people that they played golf with and casually drank some beers with or whatever fucking fancy uppity cocktails they drank in Hollywood the night before, and here we actually got some people and now that actually... Dominic, yes. you mentioned golf, I really think that we're going to make awards great again. Hell yeah, oh, hell yeah. Man. We are going to fucking yeah. make awards great again, Chris you automatically like get the award for like best joke of the night. We haven't even yeah. announced any of the winners yet. You yeah, already get like best joke of the awesome. night, right? So introducing, of course, I am Dom, the movie nerd, as it says in my little thing right there. I'm still trying to figure out camera angles with this whole streaming service. Of course, the faithful co-founder of the Morgan J. Freeman Awards, the guy who I originally pitched the idea to, who managed to help me, manage to bring this idea to fruition, Chris Volta, Noreen, whatever your last name is. I don't know. You have like 15 different last names on the internet. It's hard to keep track of. But AKA, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to go with your YouTube name. That being the boys don't cry 96. That's right. I'm bringing it back. I don't care. Chris, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, it's Noreen. Chris, I am the sexiest motherfucker to ever have waves as Hell my yeah. favorite movie of 2019. So, yeah. You may be the sexiest motherfucker to have your favorite waves be your favorite movie of 2019, but I know it's not. You're not the only one because above you, at least in the screen above me, is our other guy, Mike Sweeney. Mike, we still got to figure out a nickname for you because as much as I did enjoy Mikey with the whole halfway video that we did over the summer, I still think that there's something else that we could do. We could do a little bit better for you. So I don't know. We'll kind of figure that out on kind of the next one, but we'll figure it out. So okay. Mike, do you, do you have any words, any jokes to precede this ceremony before we get started? Yo, dude, I don't even know. It's just, um, yeah, what Chris said, we got to make awards great again. Like, Hell yeah. It's been great again. It's been shit for a while. Hell you know, yeah. All yeah. those old white ass fuck. Seriously, you know? too many too many white people in the Oscars. Yeah. Too oh, many yeah. fucking white people. Yeah. Not they're enough. So, they're so white, they might as well be ghosts. Or something. No, it's, it's, it's that. It's, it's, it's that they're all like, it's that they're all like, like, oh my God, just the amount of ignorance. It's one thing to be white. Like, it's already inexcusable enough yeah. to be white, but to be white and ignorant it's like jesus christ i mean ignorance was already a thing that pretty much came with being white so yeah that's like yeah. a horrible yeah it really really is and then of course below me it's a guy he, he's kind of like interesting because it's really hard to get your hands onto this guy and get him to come out of the ether but when he does oh man he has got some of just the best one-liners that you could possibly come up with like still that that whole women pulling off a heist being hilarious joke that's still like one of the greatest jokes i've heard in the last year so without further ado this this man needs no further introduction that is of course the one the only mr nick andres nick how are you doing i am uh okay i don't think there's enough white people in the oscars yeah, I yeah no. so, uh, who knew we might need we not might need more you know there's never enough white people but chris uh nick uh, sorry nick i'm gonna get my names mixed up uh, I'm, I'm two and a half white claws deep so i'm good uh nick uh where's your camera is my other question uh it's it's on this is just the position i've chosen to do this it makes sense so, so 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 you would say that you're like a terrence malick movie you're constantly halfway through drowning yourself while at the same time going through what looks like to be an existential crisis yeah and i'm a really good ventriloquist because you can't see my lips move Ooh, that's good that's good all right guys so got, but but three white dudes and a and a, Me and a half mexican half black guy uh i don't think anything says the oscar is better than Wait, that mike so. is half mexican and half black <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Here I thought that we were talking about you with no camera. All right. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready. I am in spirit. No, just I don't know. Um, we also need Blake Kennedy's half Mexican friend, Alex. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I was wait. I was waiting for that to happen. So shout out to well, Blake. He directed I Romo. He would have won that director last year. I think, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so with that being said, this is live streamed on YouTube. Let's fucking go. This is going to be like easily right. the best thing that YouTube's ever done. So with that being said, guys, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to hop into this Let's thing. I'm ready to announce some out. fucking winners. I'm, I'm ready to give the people in Hollywood the awards that they deserve, not the awards that they're going to get. 
I bet so, Blake Kennedy can't wait for us to announce the best of enemies, like getting winning for all of our. Uh, hey all, man, all I don't even. I, I don't even know who Blake Kennedy is. I didn't watch the best of enemies, so I'm just ready to go with yeah. this thing. So, so starting off. So, if I'm not mistaken, Chris, we're going to start off with the uh, the best supporting actor actor in a comedy award. Yep. All right. Awesome. So we're going to start off, people, with the best supporting actor in a comedy. And the nominees are Song Kang Ho for Parasite, Alessandra Nivola for The Art of Self Defense, Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Wesley Snipes for Dolomite Is My Name, and Keith L. Williams for Good Boys. And the winner is Drum Roll. Anticipation, five, four, three, two, one. Whatever you want to do for anticipation, and the winner is, of course, this should be no surprise here. They always start off with the most obvious award, that being Brad Pitt for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> da, 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 yep. da. Yeah, I mean, is anybody shocked by this, like at all? Like, I mean, I mean, these are all like pretty good nominees, I would say. I think the biggest snub here, weirdly enough, no, is great. again. Yeah, I, I mean, weirdly enough, like Tyler Gibson will probably want to strangle me for this, but I think one of the biggest snubs is Ty is Taika Waititi for Jojo Rabbit. I actually think that character adds a lot to that movie. Um, I also think Winston Duke for us was missing here a lot, but yeah, it's like the minute you watch this movie, it's like it's no secret that Brad Pitt was going to win this. Like this is Brad Pitt's award. He's going to win this tomorrow night at Oscar night. Finally, his first actual ask acting. No, I award. think Keith L. Williams is going to win tomorrow night. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I didn't watch Good yeah. Boys, so I can't really comment on that. I don't feel like I'm good at But he's won everywhere that. else. Yeah, he has. So yeah. congratulations, Mr. Pitt, for winning the Morgan J. Freeman Award for Best first Supporting one. Actor in a Comedy. The first official Morgan J. Freeman Award, you know? Nothing oh, like yeah. having... And, and yeah, he's not, gonna take that shit home. He's he's gonna put it near his bed, and he's gonna cherish that motherfucker. No, no, nothing like having actual you know, academy caliber talent in order to market your product and get all of those sweet, sweet advertising deals and all those Super Bowl spots. So moving over, who's next? Who's going to do a supporting actress comment? I don't, I don't know if the order that I see on my camera is the same as I see uh, on screen. So Mike, does that go to you next or Nick? Um, I can do okay. it. Uh, yeah. You want to do it, Nick? Mike and then Nick and then me. Okay. Oh, Mike. Mike next. I'll go All, right. Next. Yeah. all right. So Mike, right. you are up for supporting actress yeah. comedy. Yep. Yeah. So Scarlett Johansson, Jojo Rabbit, Billy Lord, Booksmart, um, Thomason McKenzie, Jojo Rabbit, Margot Robbie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and uh, Park So Park So Dom, Parasite. Yep. And the winner is Drumroll. Uh, Scarlett Johansson, Jojo Rabbit. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Scarlett, let's go. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm actually really happy for this because I thought for a minute there that um, – actually, wait, who the fuck am I kidding? Uh, well, actually, you know what? I, I mean, I had Billy Lord as my number one in this category for, like, all year long. But, like, I'm sorry. Scarlett deserved this. Like, no question. I think she was better than this in Marriage Story. I think this was not only her best performance this entire year, but this was her, like – I think her best performance again, sue me again, Tyler Gibson. But I think this was honestly her best performance since Lost in Translation. I'm not even kidding. Like this was such a naturalistic, under the wonderful. Skin, really, I didn't see under the skin. She's phenomenal in Under the Skin. That's okay. Like the, yeah, but I agree. She is great in Jojo Rabbit. Yeah, she's really good in that. It's Chris, of Switzerland. Chris, any last words? So, next is a uh, voice performance, Nick. Appropriately enough, I guess they came. Hey, out. that works. <laughs> uh, uh, Josh Brolin, Avengers Endgame. Tony Hale, Toy Story Four. Tom Hanks, Toy Story Four. Hugh Jackman, Missing Link, and Mark Ruffalo, Avengers Endgame. And the winner is. Josh Brolin, Avengers Endgame. Oh, yeah. 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 Way to go, Brolin. Way to go for the beefy Thanos yeah. dad bod cakes. Like, only in 2019 could a big ass purple CG Marvel monstrosity be turned into an attractive meme for girls. Like, that's the power right. of the internet and right Blake there. Kennedy. 
<laughs> and Blake Kennedy, yeah, exactly. And Blake Kennedy. So Josh Brolin, I mean, again, I, I think that he was way better at Infinity War, but still well utilized here. So especially for a year that was just really weak overall for animation and voice acting. So uh, Chris, moving on to, uh, again, I'm glad we're getting this category over with, but this is a really just a hilarious category, of course, invented by NIFA in 2013. That being, um, yeah. oh, hey, my other buddy Chris is commenting. Uh, get over it, Chris. It's not, not you, Chris Nareen. No, not that Chris. Chris Ivanko. Get over it, Chris. Marvel has its merits. But so Chris, Nareen, boys don't cry. Over to you for fucking sure. terrible performance. So the next category is fuck terrible performance or very at worst performance. And the nominees are James Corden for Cat Bill for Lucia. What? Hero Finds Tiffin for After. John Travolta for Fanatic. And Rebel Wilson for Cat's winner is Rebel Wilson for Cat's Fuck you, Rebel Ooh. Wilson. Ooh, Rebel Ooh. Wilson, you suck. We, we have our own version of the Raz. And we, we, is this is this also kind of like our own miniature fu to the Razzies? Because like we still manage to incorporate, we yeah. still manage to award the most gentrified award for most terrible performance, in which we don't discriminate on gender. And uh, yeah, this wasn't my personal worst performance of the year, but like rebel wilson was pretty bad for cat but it's also a situation where i don't want to discriminate rebel wilson because it's one of those situations where it doesn't matter whether she's playing a cg cat or just a shitty hustler alongside uh and hathaway uh she's going to be terrible no matter what she's already proven that she has no desire in giving actual performances she's just going to be her usual shitty rebel wilson self so and well, this shout is the out to james corden too because yeah shout out to him as well more guilty of i that. like the I'm like the only person I think of the film groups who still hasn't seen Jojo Rabbit, but like I know she's okay. hardly in the movie, right? She barely, like not enough to make an impact. Like it, okay. she's bad in it, like usual, but like not nearly enough to make an impact. I think so. Yeah. All right. So now, if I'm not mistaken, that's back to me. So moving on to the next category, we have Ooh, Ooh, we're still screenplay. doing really well. Best original screenplay. Yes, this is gonna be really well. Sorry, Ty sorry, Tyler. I'm already gonna disappoint you because Tyler jerks off to marriage Tyler story. The creator. Yeah, seriously. Oh, Tyler okay. jerks off to marriage story, but I can already tell you right now that marriage story might be getting some wins. We'll see. So the nominees for best original screenplay are Noah Baumbach for Marriage Story. Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Bong Joon-ho and Han Jin-wan for Parasite, Ronald Bronstein, Benny and Josh Safdie for Uncut Gems, and David Robert Mitchell for Under the Silver Lake. And the winner is... Bong Joon-ho and Han Jin-wan for Parasite. This is the first award that Parasite has won for the night. But I can predict right now, having not seen the winners all, that it will definitely not be the last winner that Parasite has won tonight. Hey guys, how I have a question. How funny would it be if Parasite wins more Morgan J. Freeman awards than it does Oscars? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm already seeing that as being a thing that happens. But uh, I hope to God it, not. Yeah, but seriously. That'd be depressing. Yeah. And uh, just to respond to the other Chris, Chris Ivanko, my faithful podcasting buddy in the comments. No, unfortunately, you cannot get a recap. That's why you should have been there from the beginning of the live stream. And that's why you can also go and rewatch this video on repeat when you get a chance. So moving over to Mike, you are next right. for uh, Adapted Screenplay. Awesome. Noah Harpster and uh, Micah Mike, Fitzerman Mike Blue. Fitzer Fitzerman Blue, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Stephen Dalian, The Irishman, Takia Watiti, Jojo Rabbit, J.C. Lee, and Julius Ange Luce, Greta Gerwig, L Little Woman. And the oh, man, dude. Is... Hold on, wait. Dude, I already said it. It's Taika. Taika, Taika Watiti. Watiti. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> I'm just All fucking right. around. And, and the winner is Taika Watiti, Jojo Rabbit. Oh, yeah. Way to go. That's like yeah. the one movie. That's like the one movie. Um, in this list, I haven't seen, but way to go. I yeah, I was about to say, I, I think we can support it regardless. Because yeah. just uh, again, I'm, that, again, that's probably going to be like one of the few that like match up. I mean, I think both of our screenplay awards are going to match up with what wins the Oscar. So, like, I don't know. I guess we're just boring and predictable too. But exactly, I don't know. Those maybe. to me for like, those, for that? absolutely no question. 
No question. It's won every adapted screenplay award beforehand. It's absolutely going to win. It's funny, too, how it was kind of like bombing bombing at the box office for a while. A lot of people thought it was going to kind of, it wasn't going to be like the big film of the year, you know, that like even award, Academy Awards wise that um, they I, I, I don't even know, like, uh, what's it called? I, I don't even know, like, what this movie's box office potential was, but I think it's just the fact of, like, I, I again, just the power of Marvel. You know, Taika's a big enough name. You know, I guess right. Marvel plus Nazi satire. Hey, man, that's going to get people watching it regardless. So, yeah. uh, Nick, moving over to you. So, we've got um, Best uh, Animated Feature next best for you. Animated. Wow. Nick, Nick, you were getting stuck with all of the voice yeah, right. related things. So ironic. Right? Yeah. Uh, well, fittingly, I lost my body. <laughs> Uh, first nomination, Missing Link, Toy Story 4, because none of us watch animated movies, I guess. Nope. No. Nah, this year was just a shitty year for animated movies. Kind of been that way for a while, I feel. Yeah, so I don't know. know. I don't like it's... last year and 2016. 2016 was dope. 2016, yeah, 2016 was awesome for animated films. Yes. This year, I feel like this year, too, hardly even had any animated films. Yeah, there was, like, none. Years. It was, like, it, again, it was Toy Story 4, Missing Link. I lost my body and Klaus. Those were like the only ones yeah. worth watching, and everything else is Wonder just like, Park. Yeah, Arctic Dog. Arctic Dog is one of my favorite of the year. <laughs> Arctic Dogs get made. Yeah. yeah, and the winner is surprisingly not really Toy Story Four. Oh, Ooh, Toy Story <laughs> Four is <laughs> more. I lost my body. Also lost again. It's so, just like, how did Klaus not get nominated? Like, I love you guys, but how the fuck did you guys not nominate Klaus? Like, come on, that movie. Be- Magical. If uh, what's his name? If Kurt Russell isn't in it. Oh, uh, damn. I see how it is. I see how it is, Nick. Anyway, I, so, I would have liked to have seen Eli Hayes' favorite. Anime. I bet he saw some weird animated I movies. Here. I I've seen movies know. where people literally lose their bodies. Yeah, right? <laughs> he watches real footage of people losing their bodies. <laughs> missing limbs would be uh, his. Yeah, yeah, I know. No. Eli Hayes and his obsession with extreme extreme cinema. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's getting into territories that I don't even want to cover. All right, so Chris, you are up next with Best docu- Documentary Film. All right. Another weak ass here. Best documentary are Apollo 11, Fire, Homecoming, a film by Beyonce, Knock Down the House, Leaving ne- Sorry, Leaving Neverland. All right. Um, and the winner is Fire. Bow, 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 bow. I mean, like, was there ever any doubt? I mean, I feel like the only one that, like, had a shot of maybe winning over this was Leaving Neverland, but, like, kicked off the year. Um, also, that's the other unique thing about 2019. How many other years can you say that got kicked off with not one but two fire, pun intended, documentaries about the most infamous film festival of all time, right? Like, or, or just festival. festival. Yeah, what, whatever. What, whatever that shit was. It wasn't even like a music festival at that point. It was like some fucking like wannabe FIFA shit with literal FIFA tents and like slabs of cheese on like white bread. Yes, this is a white claw. This I video homecoming is, had a chance of winning. <laughs> the, these yeah. awards, this award ceremony has been sponsored by White Claw. Homecoming, a film by Beyonce. Rolling yeah, Thunder review should have been in there too. The, but. the, the only, the old, I think the For only ones that I know. I, weirdly enough, besides Fire, I actually don't remember I watched it again because I was drunk that night. So I don't remember if I watched the Netflix or the Hulu. I think it was the Netflix one that I watched and the Hulu one I fell asleep during. But Apollo 11, weirdly enough, I actually did watch that movie. It was for my caption editing job. That was the movie that they made us watch in order to like get us to understand like how captions work. It's like you literally type words that match what they're saying. How difficult what? is that? Yeah, I'm not kidding. I wish I was kidding. But <laughs> All right. So back to me. So the next award that we are handing out at the Morgan J. Freeman Awards is Best Foreign Film. Ooh. And Another the boy nom- candy favorite. Yep. And the nominees are Climax from France and Belgium, I Lost My Body from France, Pain and Glory from Spain, Parasite from North, oh, whoops, I'm sorry, South Korea, and Portrait of a Lady on Fire from France. Damn, I'm seeing a heavy bias here. But the nominee, but the winner is, without a doubt, 
I mean, come on, are we surprised here? We, we all know what it is. We all know what it is. It's parasite. Yeah, what do you think it's it parasite. Oh, really? I wish I it was. I lost my body. Climax. Really? I personally, I personally voted for climax, but all almost every person like voted for parasite. Like, yeah. I, I, it, it really sucks because let, let's face it, like this is going to be the Roma of this year where foreign film is going to be like the pity consolation prize that it gets when it loses best picture in 1917. I will like, say though, be- I, I watched the the nomination video of from Morgan J. Freeman that you did. And I agree with what you said about this being a strange category. Cause I feel yeah. like yeah. by the same metric, you could have a best English language film yeah. like category. Right. <laughs> it kind of right. doesn't yeah, really make any sense. Like, it, it, you yeah. know what this kind of reminds me of? It's kind of the same thing as kind of when everyone raised a giant stink about the best popular award that they were going to do for last year, just so they could get the nomination for Black Panther. Cause let's face it, that's the only reason why they did that was so they could get Black Black Panther, the best picture nomination, which it got anyways. But the whole thing about that and why I like didn't freak out as much about that is because that was a thing when the Oscars first started. They had best artistic film and they had best popular film. Like that was a thing like from the Oscars inception, the whole idea of best picture only happened like three years in. So like, that's always been a thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was a thing. I didn't know that either. Yeah. yeah, Because the whole thing is wings is the first best, like popular film demand, whatever. And sunrise, a song of two humans was, you know, by obviously, um, Oh yeah. Yeah. That was the best artistic winner so sunrise the song of two humans is technically also the best the first best picture winner as well so and that should have won most popular film yeah last right year too best uh best uh little little history for you guys again that's the other reason why the morgan j freeman is better than the oscars because unlike the oscars we're actually educating you guys in some film history here uh, yeah there all you right. go yeah so um mike over awesome. to you next for the best scene award all right the noms for the best scene are or best yeah. memeable moment as i say yeah well some of these are or will become a meme one day. already memes if you oh, think yeah. about it apartment argument marriage story spawn ranch once upon a time in hollywood bunker parasite piano man under the silver lake true love waits waves and the winner is Bunker Parasite. Yeah, another scene from Parasite. It's funny because literally like minutes before this award ceremony began, I was struggling to get as many last minute voters in as I could in order to break the tie because we actually had a three-way tie between the apartment scene from Marriage Story, Spawn Ranch from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and the bunker scene from Parasite. But we I th- thank God for uh, my buddy Kyle coming in clutch last minute and managed to break that tie. I uh, was unable to break certain other ties, but uh, good job, Kyle, for managing to break that tie. Because that bunker scene, it's not my personal favorite scene of the year, but that scene was pretty pretty badass in terms of just, like, scenes. Like, it's, it's a, talk about a film that had so many twists and turns of, like, wow, you would not see that coming as it was. So, Nick, over to you. I'm hoping that you don't get stuck with another... Uh, Best voiceover. Okay, so this is pretty good. So Nick, your your category that you get next is uh the best soundtrack category. Again, another category that started with Nifa and and is continued with Morgan J. Freeman. The idea of the scores are great in film, but obviously a lot of films, modern day films now, are accentuated by the soundtrack that they have underlying them. You know, so Nick, over to you. What are the who are the nominees for the Morgan J. Freeman Award 2019 Best Soundtrack? Uh, the nominees are the Beach Bum. Book Smart, Climax, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Waves. And the winner is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, gotta love them 60s, them Beach Boys, and a bunch of other songs by bands in there that I don't remember because I'm not a music guy. Oh, well. Six Nine. <laughs> Yeah. Takashi 69. Six nine. Nine. R.I.P. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. R.I.P. Well, he's not dead. He isn't? No, he's just in jail. Oh, yeah. right. That's right. Ah, he's going to yeah. be dead anyway soon. He raped a bunch of little girls. He's thinking of dead. Kobe Bryant. If there's, if there's one thing that... If, there, if there's one thing that prisoners hate more than other prisoners, it's other prisoners that are rapists, especially child rapists and pedophiles. Oof. Longest yard rules right there, right? Was that was that Randy Couture in the Longest Yard that said that? It's like, what about the other rapists? Can we rape them? They deserve it. And then Rob Schneider was like, rape the rapists. I like it. Uh, it's classic Rob. <laughs> classic Rob. Classic, classic Rob. All right. So, Chris, moving over to you. We've got next best right. original song. 
original song. Okay, all right. Um, the nominees for best original song are Control from her from Under the Silver Lake, and Glasgow, No Place Like Home from Wild Rose. And the winner is Control. Unfortunately, yeah! put out a song for a movie. Otherwise, it went this category. Well, he wrote Glasgow for you Wild would, Rose. You would be correct, but I just gotta say that the fact that her smell manages to get a win here makes me happier than anything else because well, that is a for movie this that song too. Like, yeah, I loved the song like right away when I saw the movie. And I don't really yeah. think it was. I thought it was gonna be kind of an esoteric pick. Yeah, no, yeah, but no. it's like it's not like an ironic or esoteric pick. It's like an actual like really well deserved wide pick. And if I'm not mistaken, if I'm checking, um, how many wins? How many overall votes this got? Um, let me just check and go down. Best original song. This actually got out of all of the votes. It's got twenty-one votes. That's pretty impressive. Like by Morgan J. Freeman Awards. This got twenty-one votes. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah no, that's a lot of. Yeah, it is. Com yeah, compared to. Um, Glasgow, which only got 20 votes, and Turning Teeth, which only got 12. So I had no idea so many people saw Wild Rose. Yeah, right. Yeah, right? I didn't <laughs> no. see Wild Rose. It's it's like, a like, decent amount, like a decent amount of people in the fan leagues and the trivia leagues that I mean could watch Wild Rose just so they could like fucking get some trivia questions right about that movie, and literally just so they could watch the movie because it's like the only thing <laughs> combination that that movie got. Which is funny because if you look like I think Jesse Buckley was in more things in 2019 than she's been in in like her entire career. So <laughs> I also think Like a Boss was originally called Wild Rose. That I'm makes sense. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. I don't know why. But we'll talk our, about that next year. Yeah. I with can't the wait. Yeah, like the boss is already like a classic. With the 2020 yeah. Morgan. From, from the, the producer of uh, the 2006 film, The Motel. So, yeah. there you go. so if we're moving on to my next category. So we've got best original score. And the nominees are Thomas Newman for 1917. Randy Newman for Marriage Story. Thank oh, God boy. Short People was nowhere near this movie. Daniel Lopat. God damn it, Chris. It's one of tricks point never. One of tricks point never, no, God tricks damn it. Point. For Uncut Gems. Michael Abels for Us. And Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross for Waves. And the winner is one of tricks point motherfucking never. For uncut gems. I'm sorry, buddy. You don't get to come up with the most badass, like, alternative name for a musician title ever. And then all of a sudden revert back to your real name in order to try and add some legitimacy to you. I'm oh, sorry. That That's, a lot. I know it does. But Bobby he's Krillick not, did that for Midsummer too. But, but he's, he's done film scores in the past. Yeah, but he's not allowed to do it here because the Morgan J. Freeman Awards is decreeing once and for all that if you come up with a badass alternative name, you're stuck with it. So I don't care what disaster piece his real name is for Under the Silver Lake. He's stuck as disaster piece in my mind. He has no real fucking name. Same thing as Daniel. Band? Well, sure, whatever. Well, what if Jason Bateman like renames him? Though, no, what are we gonna do that? Well, the, he's well. That's a different thing. Now we're talking about actors, not musicians. And so Jason Bateman is always no, Jason a musician. Bateman. He's a musician. How? He was in the Bateman, Beatles. He plays like jazz. In, and yeah. Okay, fine, whatever. But he's still Jason Bateman. All right, I get it. Your guy's dumb little inside joke. I, I can joke. see Jason Bateman like playing Frank Sinatra in a movie or some shit. We weirdly enough, or I can Frank see that Benita. too. But yeah. but 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 knowing him, it's gonna end up being Nick Robinson playing. You know, Nick Robinson will play Frank Sinatra before Jason Bateman ever will. Yeah. So, um, but hopefully, Jason Bateman will be in a Safdie Brothers movie soon, which would be fucking awesome. That would be hell movie. That would be really cool. So. Um, Mike, moving on to you. You've got cinematography yep. next. So cinematography, we have Roger Deakins, 1917, Benet, Benoit, Benet Climax, Jaron Blaschke, The Lighthouse, Robert Richardson, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and then finally, last but not least, Drew Daniels' Waves. The winner is Roger Deakins, 1917. Yeah, I mean... Like, Okay. We, I, he wasn't my number one, but like 
he's Roger Deakins. He, he like, was my number one. one he was my number one. Like no question, he was always going to be my number one. I I don't care, man. I I jerk off to those fucking yeah. one shot techniques, dude. That shit is cool. Yeah. Well, this this is the movie where they stop the train attack in Paris, right? Yeah, this is that movie. Oh yeah, that movie. I didn't know that was in one shot. That's interesting. Yeah, it's crazy, right? The whole thing is in one shot, and you're following the real guys as they portray the real the, as they recreate their real life trauma and their real moms, Judy Greer and. Uh, for, for the bread and circus of millions of people to watch as these guys are forced to relive their trauma. Thank you, Clint Eastwood. I mean, I mean Sam Mendes for that. Yeah. Um, Yo, imagine if Clint Eastwood actually did like, if Clint Eastwood actually did like write and direct 1917. Right? film. Oh my God. He's we, we, still racist. It's been oh, so long. There is, uh, George McCann. <laughs> oh my God. He would like have a heart attack just by trying to get through those. Olivia feats. Wilde as the the girl he meets in the, the building. Oh God. Yeah. Oh God. Olivia Wilde was already bad enough in Richard Jewell. I don't need her doing a bad French accent. All right. So Nick, moving on. You've got um best. Let me find it. Da, 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 da. Best costume. No, best costume. Oh no, wait. You're right. Best oh. editing. I'm an yeah. idiot. Best editing. You're right. Don't listen to me. Okay. I don't have the editor names on me, but no, that's fine. 1917. Editors don't have names. Uh, 1917. The Irishman, Parasite, Uncut Gems, and Waves. And the winner is Parasite. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 1917 and your goddamn three edits yeah. in your whole movie. Parasite. Yeah, that was difficult though. Like yeah. Watching it because it's hard. It's kind of like Birdman, where it's hard to. Kind of, but, but but like the thing that's admirable is like Birdman. You're constantly trying to search for the edits because they are noticeable if you do pay enough attention. 1917, like because so much of that movie is like one continuous shot. There's like only like six edits total in that entire movie, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's true. Like, so it does make it like a little bit trickier, obviously. So I think that's like the big difference when everyone wants to talk about the one shot gimmick between 1917 and uh, and Birdman. But uh, yeah, so Chris, you are next with best costume design. Yeah. So the nominees for best costume design are Dolomite is my name, Joe Lim, Sapanov and Holly, Rocket Man. And the winner is. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Cool. Woo! I'm actually kind of shocked that we didn't go for. Um, I mean, my personal pick was Dolomite is my name, but again, I, that, that's a little bit of bias for Ruth Carter, only because of how fucking high she was last year when she won her award for Black Panther. That's still one of the funniest Oscar speeches I've ever seen because I don't know about you guys, but to me, it was so goddamn obvious that she smoked a lot of bud and a couple of carts before she went up for that speech. Uh, I don't remember. That that was overall forgettable. Once After the Queen performance, I mostly zoned out for the rest of it. I was actually gone. I didn't actually watch most of that ceremony. Um, So moving on. After that, we've got best hair and makeup. Ooh. So the nominees are Bombshell, The Dead Don't Die, which RIP enforced. That is the only film nominated that didn't get a single vote. It's a little bit disappointing. What? The I, I'm, I'm serious. That's a good movie, too. That's an, I, mean, I don't love that movie as much as Nick, but it is kind of full It's a really great movie. Shot by me, also, I would like to add uh, The Irishman, Joker. And Rocket Man. And the winner is Joker. Really? It's just like it's just like basic clown makeup that you could buy at like Party City. Yeah, like they do, I they do a good job. Joker, like, like, I yeah, I, I literally was the Joker. Like that—that that was the Halloween costume that got me my first ever girlfriend. Like, yeah, no, dude, I, where's your fucking award? Well, how, like, how, where, where's my fucking award? How the fuck did I not win for Joker for best? No, they did, they did a good job, like, kind of updating the Joker look. Yeah, they, they did a good job making it look like super kitsch and like making Joaquin Phoenix look like Stranger, even though like his fucked up shoulder, I feel like, did more for his performance than anything he actually did for that movie. But like, come on. 
All right, whatever. Hopefully All right. This, this is the time. winner. Like we're talking, this, this is the last. We're just dragging time. it for no reason. Hopefully, this is the last fucking time I ever have to talk about that <laughs> stupid movie. All right, Mike, moving on to you. Best visual effects. All right, best visual effects are 1917, Ad Astra, Avengers Endgame, The Lion King, and Pokemon Detective Pikachu. And the winner is Avengers Endgame. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, motion capture technology and large explosions. What the hell would we do without you? Right? Fucking Marvel, man. It's taken over the world. Man. Yeah, right? Shit. Good. I is hope they good? take over. I hope they take over everyone. Weirdly enough, I'm actually hoping, even though Bob Iger is friends with Donald Trump, I am hoping that Marvel and Disney eventually take over the US government. Because as shitty as things are, I think that it would still be better. Let's face it. No, that would be horrible. Everything yeah. would be better if Disney controlled the White House, that right? That would probably be worse. <laughs> Free yeah. child labor for everyone. Um all right, so Nick, moving on to you next. Uh, we have best production design. Okay, best production design. 1917, The Lighthouse, Midsummer, Summer. Still never figured out how to, how to two, pronounce that. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Parasite. And the winner is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yeah, again, is any nobody shocked by this? Nobody is shocked by no. this. Like, I, I get it. The one thing I will say, and it's funny because this is actually a point that Screen Junkies brought up, but is that the one thing I will say is I feel like people are automatically willing to write off production design just because it like looks like something that you would see in regular face. But I just want to give a shout out to Parasite because Parasite did like both of the sets that we saw, both the rich people's house and the poor people's house. They built that shit from scratch. So I Same with the to, lighthouse they did too. Yeah, exactly. So like I do have to give credit where credit is due. But it's like even with the lighthouse, um, like because the lighthouse, because it's a period piece, and be like like period pieces, like usually that's something that, like just award ceremonies in general suckers for because it's like it's not something that's like generally well known in real life. And you know, once upon a time in Hollywood again, period piece, so it has that whole setting going for it. But I just wanted to give a shout out to Parasite, you know. Marriage story, not so much because Netflix they use the same sets for everything, and all their movies kind of have the same general look overall. It's like very rare that you get like the exceptions, like Roma and the Irishman are the only like exceptions to the rule. And yeah. I am divine was going to show up at some point. Oh, God. Oh, God. Why did you have to mention his name? Because now he, I'm, I'm waiting for him to pop into this video somewhere. Um, all right. So. so, Nick, moving on. You've uh, Actually, wait, no. You just went. Uh, Chris. Oh, man. That would be funny. Because, <laughs> Chris, you've got this next category, which best is sound. best sound. All right. And the nominees for best sound are 19 Sedra, The White, Midsummer, and Waves. And the winner is 1917. I mean, I'm surprised. I mean, who'd have thought like 1917 would be way like, right? right? Well, I mean, the one thing that I'll give 1917, going back to when I first saw it, with uh, Jason Osias and Aaron Hunt, Rachel D'Alfonso, Lexi Amariello, Ryan Feskovic, and... Uh, <laughs> Soon to be future, um, uh, NIFA, I mean, FFF, uh, film member Kara Marie, I think, I don't know, is that, uh, that it was the first movie that I'd seen in a while that actually made me like jump whenever a gunshot went off. And I can say that that is not something that a lot of films recently have done. So props to 1917 for winning. Yeah. Didn't Aaron hate 1917? I just yeah, Aaron hated it. Aaron fucking hated it. But it's also one of those situations where I couldn't tell if he was joking. I feel like Aaron like hates everything, though. Aaron probably is that guy that hates everything. He's he's kind of like a Justin Noble, but who, who are we kidding? Both of those guys got to go to Wayne Diamond's uh, yeah. Super Bowl parties. So, like, what can we say against those guys? Yeah. Um, all right. That's kind of yeah. enough. I don't know. But so... I don't even know. I was thinking of Nathan Diamond. Never mind. Yeah. So moving on, so we have, so guys, we're almost over. I believe that finishes off a majority of the technical awards. Mm -hmm. So now we just have the acting awards. We're into the big dogs now. Oh, so yeah. starting off with best actor in a comedy. That's right, because we make, we're more legit than the Golden Globes. We separate our actors out into the comedies and dramas that they deserve. So starting off with best actor in a comedy, the nominees are Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Jesse Eisenberg for The Art of Self-Defense, Andrew Garfield for Under the Silver Lake, Matthew McConaughey for The Beach Bum, 
and Eddie Murphy for Dolomite is my name. And the winner is Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Congratulations, Leo, for your next win. I felt like this would be a little bit more important if you hadn't won your pointless fucking um, Lifetime Achievement Award for The Revenant. But alas, you've gotten this. Pointless. Pointless. I mean, Fastbender should have gotten it that year. We all yeah. know. He should have gotten Leo, it. Leo should have gotten it in um, 2014 for Wolf of Wall Street. Right, yeah. But, I mean, if you ask me, like, let, let's face it, he should have gotten it over his fucking... Aviator, even. Well, even that, before that, for fucking supporting for What's Eating Gilbert Grape, which he was nominated for. Like, I'm Fast sorry. Fassbender shouldn't have won for Steve Jobs, though, by that metric, in my Re opinion. Oh, really? Who would you have given it to? Well, I mean, he, he should have won for other stuff before that. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. But it's, like, the difference being that, like, DiCaprio was nominated for What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Fassbender wasn't nominated for... Like, Fassbender was only nominated for 12 Years of Slave. So it's like, yeah, sure, he should have probably won over fucking Jared Leto, but it's like, Jared Leto still gave a good performance. That's the thing, like, 2013 was at the very least a stacked year. 2015 was, like, a really shitty year for Best Actor. So it's like, it was like... Not true, three, I don't mean two. to drag him. I do love that performance, but yeah. I do dislike the kind of hatred people have for DiCaprio and The Revenant. Yeah. Well, 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 again, it's not necessarily a hatred for DiCaprio. It's a matter of, A, what the Oscars continually do with giving the bullshit Lifetime Achievement Award and also just the direct against Inderitu for what he did with that movie, which, I, again, I, I kind of agree with that because the whole thing is Inderitu kind of shoots himself on the foot because I think he has a compelling story in there, but he's more focused on the symbolism with the scenery, and it really kind of drags that movie out, like, almost to an unnecessary amount. But um, moving no, on. So, disagree. Hard. We'll have to come to blows to that later, Nick. Um, all, right. all right. So Mike. Mike Kennedy can be the referee. Right. Mike Kennedy, do you say? So, yeah. Um, I said come to blows. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good one. Um, best actress. Best actress. A comedy. Actress. All right. Anna D. Anna D. Armas, Knives Out, Caitlin Denver, Caitlin Dever, Booksmart, Biani Fieldstein, Booksmart, Lupita Nyong'o, Us. Um, Samara Weaving, ready or not, and the winner is well deserved. Lupita Nyong'o, Us. Yeah, I'm sorry. If Get Out's a comedy, then Us is a comedy. I'm sorry, but yeah, fuck yeah, this is a no brainer. Get Out was hilarious. Hilar one of the funniest movies of two yeah. years ago. It's so Three funny that when I watched it, I almost died because I was laughing so hard. It's it's so funny that. <laughs> my mind went to the sunken place and I was like, yeah. whoa. I don't know. I didn't have a joke there. Like that, but both of these movies are great. Also, obviously not as consistent as Get Out, but you thought Get Out was more of a what? A foreign film. <laughs> that's true. It should have been. Well, that's yeah. kind of why it's a comedy too, I feel, right? because the idea of non-white actors in movies is inherently <laughs> funny to me. All right, so moving on. We're almost done, people. We're tired. Right. This has been long. So, Nick, you're up next for best cast. Uh, best cast. The Irishman, Little Women, Marriage Story, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. And the winner is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, again. Yeah. Obvious. Oh. Very, very obvious. Like, it, it, it's funny. But it, I will say it's funny how, like, all of these big-name directors, because they're, like, big enough now, just have – just put out these movies where, like, they get, like, every single person they've, like, ever worked with that would, like, ever want to work with them. Like, Tarantino and Scorsese both had that in, like, the same year, and Wes Anderson's kind of got that next year with The French Dispatch with, like, every single actor that's ever – He has that in, like, all of his movies, though. True, but this year it's, like, an exceptional amount of people. And, like, I'm just waiting for, like, Spielberg to do that. I'm waiting for Nolan to, I'm just waiting for, like – Isn't he going to get Oscar Schindler in his movie? <laughs> and get the War Horse to come back? <laughs> War Horse. I got War, Blake Kenny would love that. <laughs> Tearing up in the theater. Yeah. He's like, don't die right. on me, horse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, so. And the next category is best ending. Um, and the nominees for best ending are Avengers Endgame, The Lighthouse, oh, such Once Upon a uh, Time in Hollywood, Paris with Gems, and the winner for best ending is I think oh, that's fuck the reason you. why this I can't believe. Is what the fuck? What the fuck? 
Wow, people are. It like while I was watching TV, whispering, whispering. Did you hear what I said? That's so, I don't know, that's, that's so dumb. All the, the endings for all of those movies are like a thousand. Like, I'm not saying the ending to Avengers Endgame is bad, but like compared to the ending to The Lighthouse, Parasite, Uncut Gems, once, like, all, like all four of those endings I would have been happy with. All four of those endings are phenomenal. Avengers Endgame is the weakest one of the bunch. Like My f- favorite of these is Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems is great. That's a, that's a phenomenal ending. Yeah, um, it's great. Mine, I forget. My, I, I feel like my favorites. I may have nominated the lighthouse. It's either the lighthouse or parasite. I nominated for my favorite, but Uncut Gems is like, like close number th- like three or four. Yeah, I think nice. I did. Um, I won Avengers Endgame for here. That's just crazy. That one, but yeah, it's okay. No, it's cool. We're just Joe Biden, twenty twenty. Yeah. All right, so is that back to me or Chris? That's over to you. Yeah. No, Chris just did it. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm on the best supporting yeah, actor the in a drama. All right, so the nominees are Willem Dafoe for The Lighthouse, Tom Hanks for A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Shia LaBeouf for Honey Boy, Al Pacino for The Irishman, and Joe Pesci for The Irishman. And the winner is Willem Dafoe for The Lighthouse. The proper, proper winner for this category. I think this is pretty obvious and safe to say. He was, was he Oscar nominated for this? I don't remember. Unfortunately, he was not. He lost out to That's crazy. Anthony Hopkins for The Two Popes somehow. Uh, the movie, I'm not, I still haven't seen that movie. I don't really have any interest in it. Ugh. Gross. Yeah. I, really, shit. All right. I really thought I want to see it. Started, like, got the shaft by like the awards, a lot of the big, big awards this season. That yeah. was. I thought Sam Jackson got the shaft. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> that is one of the best movies yeah, of 2019. Sh- like, low key. Easily. All right. So, moving on. Mike, you're up next. Shaft. With... Chat. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, cool. That's Nick Armstrong would, would nominate Shaft for yeah. everything. Best Supporting Actress in Drama, Jennifer Lopez, Hustlers, Florence Pugh, Little Woman, Taylor Russell, Waves, Zhao Shuzin, The Farewell, Octavia Spencer, Loose. And the winner is... Um, it's a tie. Oh, it's a tie. Florence Pugh, Jennifer Lopez. Yep, Jennifer Lopez, yeah. Hustlers, Florence Pugh, Little Woman. Both of y'all, congrats. You earned it. Both well deserved wins. Oh. Yeah. All right. You danced all night, girl. You deserve it. Hell yeah. yeah. Gotta get that Super Bowl win. All right. Plastic bag. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Nick, you're up next for uh, best director. All right. Um, nominees are Ari Aster, Midsummer, Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Bong Joon Ho, Parasite. Ben and Josh Safty Uncut Gems, and Trey Edward Schultz Waves. And the winner is Bong Joon-ho, Parasite. Yeah, Bong Joon-ho, there you go. Kind of surprising. Yeah. yeah. Also, like, did oh, none of you guys vote for Mendez? No, I don't think I did. No, none of y'all voted All for right. Scorsese. No. <laughs> I can't fathom that, how that oh, happened. Yeah. It was a competitive year. Yeah, Here's, indeed. Nick, Nick was the Irishman. only person that voted for Scorsese. For, in, in, it's amazing. So wild. Yeah. Crazy. He was close for me, but yeah, no. And I don't think I had him in. And I, I love the Irishman too, but like. Yeah. All right, Chris, let's bring this home, baby. Three categories left. All right. Um, All right. So the next category wait, next? is Chris. best actor in a drama. Oh, yeah. So the category is best actor in a drama. The nominees are Robert De Niro for The Irishman, Adam Driver for Marriage Story, Kelvin for Waves, Joaquin Phoenix for Joker, and Adam Uncut Gems. And the 
The winner is Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. I'm still kind of surprised by that. I kind of thought it would be Driver. I think or, Walking Phoenix yeah. is phenomenal, but Adam Sandler and um, and uh, Adam Driver, um, I, I don't know. The only one that deserved to be Phoenix here. And, I'm and sorry. A lot, but, um, Sandler and Harrison Jr. impressed me more. Yeah, those two. Yeah. Especially Sandler. Sandler. George yep. McKay was missing. Robert Pattinson was missing. Uh, Mel Gibson. I'm, I'm just kidding. Mel Gibson John was like the nowhere near this. Yeah. You sure that's not a comedy? Wait, Mel Gibson? Guy from Snapped, yeah, for Dragged Across Concrete. Oh, Dragged Across AOC. Yeah. That's <laughs> call it. Yeah. All right. So, I feel like Mel Gibson and AOC would not like each other. Yeah, so for bringing this home, I think they'd get along. You do? I don't know. So we got two categories left, people. So again, being super diverse because we're diverse towards women. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the best actress were really diverse women. <laughs> best actress in a drama, and the nominees are Aquafina for the Farewell, Scarlett Johansson for Marriage Story, Elizabeth Moss for Her Smell, Florence Pugh for Midsummer, and Saoirse Ronan for Little Women. And the winner is Scarlett Johansson for Marriage Story. Congratulations, double, yes. double Oscar nominee. Now. Double Morgan J. Freeman Award winner. Oh Scarlett yeah, Hansen. I bet yeah. Scarlett Johansson's like crying tears of joy right now. Oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. MJ, MJF. Awards. Yeah. All right. So without further ado, the Grand Poobah. So Scarlett we got ten Johansson awards. Won two more. Greta Gerwig won. Ali. <laughs> so without further ado, so oh, from the guy from Green Book, right? So if you want, we can go around. Yeah. Uh, we can start with Mike, then Chris, then Nick, then me. Um, Mike, you can do because we got ten here. Um, one, two, three. Mike, you can do the first three. Chris, because you're a little bit laggy, you can do the next two. Then Nick, you can do the next three, and then I will do the last two. Sounds good. That works. All right. Mike, All right. So here we go. The moment y'all been waiting for. Best Picture nominations. All right, here we go. Um, Booksmart, The Irishman, The Lighthouse. Chris, the next two after The Lighthouse. Yeah. Um, uh, two, you said? Yes, the next two after The Lighthouse. Oh. Okay. Um, Marriage Story, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, Parasite, Uncut Gems, Under the Silver Lake. Us and Waves. And without further ado, the official award for Best Picture for the Morgan J. Freeman Awards. Bringing this whole thing to an end. The winner is Parasite. Congratulations, Bong Jun Ho, Han Jin Wan, all the people that have been involved. Parasite, a Korean film, is the first official winner Emphasis for the Morgan on- J. Freeman Award for best, or in this case, most anal feature. I think we got to come up with a bit, with a different title for that. Yeah, I, I I love the most anal feature award, but like we, we got to come up with something just a little bit different for that. So I know. with yeah, so with that being said. Uh, this is it, guys. We did it. Those are all of your winners. We're leaving uh, Neverland. Yep, we are indeed leaving Neverland. Uh, oh, yeah. New decade, new rules, all of that good shit. But uh, yeah, those are all the winners. Congratulations to your winners. Uh, I wish we had actual awards to give you guys. Hopefully we will at some point. How funny would it be if it's just like like they get all their Oscars and then the, the winners come home and then they just find like these little envelopes with like these shitty little like mortgage different award things yeah, right. in, their, in, in their mailboxes. So uh, with all that being said, uh, guys, let's go around. Let's wrap it up. Where can the good people on the interwebs find you guys for all of your continued hilarious endeavors? Mike, we can start with you. Okay. Well, I don't have a YouTube channel or anything, but um, you can find me on a letterbox. My name on a letterbox is simply Michael, or you can just type in Blaze or Sweeney, and you should be able to find me. 
Or just, just type in my full name, actually, Michael Sweeney Letterbox. I should be like the first one. I don't know. Nick, where can the good people find you? Uh, well, I direct movies under the name Tom Brady. Yep. Um, and, you know, I directed The Comebacks, The Hot Chick, Bucky Larson, Born to Be a Star. I love Bucky Larson. Um, it's a greatest movie. Thank you. I'm working on The Comebacks, too. That's still a few decades away from coming out. But until then, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and Chris, where can the good people find you? Yeah. Um, and if you want to find me, just like log in Pornhub and just go under like the blowjob section and you'll be good. So makes total sense. You totally look like a blowjobs guy, not an ass guy. And yeah. uh, of course, you can find me on the YouTubes, the interwebs, the Instagrams at Talking TV Podcast or at Moving Nerd Reviews, whichever one you guys choose to watch. I'm tired. It's late, but this has been a lot of fun. I'm glad we were able to do this in only an hour or two. Suck it, Oscars. We got done in an hour, but it takes you assholes like three hours, three, four hours to get done. So with that- They have celebrity that, presenters. Yeah, good point. Celebrity presenters. Yeah, we'll, we'll get that at some point. So we, we gotta, gotta get Chris Duckman. Set. We gotta get- uh, Chris Duckman, we gotta get- the movie Kennedy. fan. We gotta get Eli Hayes. We gotta, we gotta get, get Blake Kennedy. Yeah. All the YouTube stars. All the YouTube stars. So with that being Jason said, Bateman from Mike, for game from Mike, Amazing from Nick, that. from Chris, <laughs> yeah. from myself, Dom. This has been the first annual Morgan J. Freeman Awards. We out, bitches. Good night. We out. Goodbye.